Hi, I've been here from Pride and Fly Fishing, and I'm back today to continue our series on how to choose a fly rod. And today we're gonna to be talking about perhaps the most important and most difficult to understand concept, which is line weight. So if you're new to fly fishing, you're probably wondering, what is line weight? And that's actually a great question that maybe even some people who have been fishing for a long time don't really know. Line weight refers to the grain weight of the first 30 feet of the head of a fly line. What is a grain, you might ask? Well, a grain is 1 7,000th of a pound. Or to put it another way, there are roughly 15 and a half grains in a gram. And why aren't fly lines measured in an easier thing like, say, grams? Well, why would you want to use a decimal point? Without going into too long of a history lesson, people were measuring the grains on their individual lines and trying to pair them to rods, and it was really complicated. And an organization called AFTMA, the American Fly Fishing the American Fishing Tackle Manufacturers Association came up with a line standard to solve all of those problems. It was totally revolutionary and made things way, way easier. Can you imagine what it would be like to have to cast a dozen different lines on every single-handed rod to try to figure it out? It'd be just like spay casting. Now, over the years, AFMA has become AFTA, and they've updated the chart to be a little bit more modern and keep up with some of these line standards. But the fact remains that your line weight, be it 5, 8, 12, or otherwise, is just a number that is designed to correspond with the grain weights on this chart. Now, what's happened over the years is fly rods have gotten faster. They've also become way more advanced. And your average 5 weight now can cast a huge range of lines. So what that's done is allowed rod designers to start with the grain weights on that chart, but really expand them. And along with that, so have fly lines. Oh, and by the way, fly line heads have gone from 30 feet to 45 or 50 feet on average, and some even get way, way longer than that. So now you're probably more confused than you were at the start, but let me sum this up for you. Line weight corresponds to the weight of your fly line, and it is generally the opinion of the fly rod designer that a rod marked as an eight weight should cast lines that are also marked as an eight weight. And because there are differences in action, not every single eight weight rod will then cast every single eight weight line and so on. And thus, we have this video. This video is supported 100% by your purchases at Trident Fly Fishing. So if you're in the market for some new tackle, check us out at tridentflyfishing.com. Now, hopefully you're watching this video because you're trying to decide which line weight of fly rod you would like to buy. And of course, we started this video series out by going over the very basics on how to choose that. So if you want the really, really easy solution here, go back to our first video, watch that. We already done that for you there. Here, we're gonna dive in a little bit deeper. And I wanted to start by talking about the most common misconception that I hear all the time when it comes to line weight. And that is that line weight dictates the fish that you can chase. If you go on a forum, people will say, oh, you can't catch a striped bass on anything other than a 10 weight. Or, oh, you wanna chase musky, you're gonna need a 12 weight at least. And that's simply not the case. While the fish you're chasing does play into line weight, it's actually probably the least important factor here. And we're gonna start by going over the most important factor, which is the fly. And any time that you're thinking about which line weight rod to choose, you're gonna to wanna to start with the fly. And I've got some great examples here. If you've ever been hooked up to a pike or a muskie, you could probably catch that 20 pounder in a very short amount of time on a five weight. Heck, I'm pretty sure that I could get that fish in in three minutes flat, even on a three weight glass rod. But I can't cast this giant musky fly on a three weight. In fact, this thing is gonna soak up so much water that I probably can't cast it on an eight weight. And that's where line weight comes in. So 
the more mass you have in your line, i.e. the higher the line weight, the more kinetic energy you're gonna create. And that's what's gonna allow you to throw a larger fly. So just to summarize, the most important thing to consider when you're thinking about the line weight for your new fly rod is the fly. You need to make sure that you've got enough energy in that fly line and in your cast to deliver that fly accurately and easily to your fish. And if you find that you can't cast the fly that you want to, simply go up a line weight. The second factor to consider when choosing a line weight is gonna be the conditions. Now we've already talked about flies and particularly fly size, but conditions also play an important role. If you're casting into the wind, it's gonna have very much the same effect as increasing the size of that fly. You're just gonna need more of that mass and more of that energy to get your fly accurately to the target. So if you're fishing in conditions that can be windy, like a lot of saltwater flats, think about stepping up a line weight. Similarly, if you're fishing to really spooky fish, like bonefish that have been hit really, really hard, or a tailwater or spring creek that gets a lot of angler pressure, you might wanna consider dropping down a line weight. Because just as we talked about with that increase in mass, when you decrease mass, it's gonna send less vibrations into the water and give you a much better presentation. The third factor to consider is angler ability. And we've talked about kinetic energy in this, and the formula for that is one half mv squared. The mass is gonna apply to your fly line. However, the v in that formula is gonna be velocity. And that's gonna to apply to how fast you can make that line move. And actually, it's a lot more important. So if you're a really great caster, and you can create tons and tons of line speed, you can probably drop down a line weight because you'll need less mass to turn over that fly. And I know I started out by saying that fish species and size was not important, but now we're gonna come back to it. Because after you've gone through all of the other factors, it's definitely worth considering fish size and species into your line weight calculation. Now we've talked about this musky fly, but let's talk about this bonefish fly. This here is a size eight gotcha. It's a really tiny fly and one that I could easily cast on a three weight. Now bonefish are some of the fastest fish in the ocean and they pull way too hard for me to fish for them on a three weight realistically. So I'm gonna to have to increase my line weight in order to effectively fish for these bonefish. I wanted to do one example and kind of go through all of our factors in one to find the perfect line weight. So for this example, let's assume we're going tarpon fishing in the Florida Keys. I'm gonna start with my fly here, in this case, a tarpon toad. This fly is not very big. And given my ability, I can probably cast this pretty effectively on a six weight even when it's wet. Next up is gonna be the conditions. Fishing the Keys, it can often get pretty windy. So I might wanna step it up. But also, these fish can be a little bit spooky. So, so far, six weight still looking pretty good. I'm also a pretty good caster, but we've already actually taken that into consideration with the six weight. Not everyone would be able to cast this on a six weight. And last but not least is fish size, and of course, this is where the big change happens. Tarpon are a huge fish, and a six weight would not be anywhere near big enough to land a tarpon effectively. So I'm gonna have to step it up massively. In this case, I'd go with an 11 weight. And that is how you choose a line weight for virtually any fish that swims. I hope you found this video informative, and don't forget, if you still have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to Trident. We've got a great staff that is ready to help you anytime you need it. And don't forget to watch our next video, which is gonna be talking about fly rod length, and you're not gonna to wanna to miss it. I'm Ben, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.